the weather had us cancel tonight's table worship and Christmas potluck, um, but I'm trying to go through and kind of explain what we would have done, and we can still do some things virtually, of course. Perhaps you heard uh, me read the gospel text uh, for that worship service and the mini-sermon uh, delivered on those verses. Uh, what we would have done in the fellowship hall tonight and what we might even do in the future is have some table time. And during table time, uh, you would grab a piece of paper with this yellow background here, and we would just go through the questions based on the scripture passages read that evening or whatever time of day it happens. So this Matthew 1, after the long genealogy that leads to Jesus from uh, Joseph's side, then we get this word uh, in Matthew that it kind of explains a really tough situation. Adults, I mean, according to the law, what were Joseph's options? Your fiancé is found to be with a child that's not yours. According to the law, what must he do? Is going ahead with this marriage even possible for him to uh, endure that? To be with somebody that isn't trustworthy? Well, by the law, he had a couple choices. Should we go with the tough one first? Under the strict sense of Deuteronomy, I believe it's chapter 25, one option leads to the stoning of Mary. But Joseph, being a quote-unquote righteous man, has decided to follow the law. He's got to follow the law, after all. And instead, let her down gently. He's got to divorce her quietly, hoping to avoid some of the ridicule and humiliation that would be sure to happen both for himself. He's protecting himself, and he's resolved in this plan to protect his former fiancé. Now, God had a different plan, of course. Kids, question for you. If you were Joseph, what kind of face would you make of a messenger gave you news that your wife-to-be, Mary, would have a child by the Holy Spirit before you were even married to her? What would your face look like, kids? Would it look like this? Or would it look like this? Would it look like this? <sighs> what? I made a sound too, not just a face. Kids, what face? I mean, that's crazy. Is this the face we made? I don't know. Tell your parents. Show your parents your face. If an angel would have told you that, this is actually crazy things. Now, what would Joseph be afraid of? Being humiliated. Let's be honest, kids and adults. Do words hurt? Do perceptions of those at your workplace and in your communities Matter? Yeah, to some degree. I suppose we get older and we care less and less. Is that true? Maybe. Man, I, at every stage of my life, I think it, it does hurt to be found in a scandal like this. Then what does the angel say to him about fear? This is awesome. Here. Here's what the angel said. 
do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Now we could react to that like this. What do you mean? What do you mean? Don't be afraid of this. My life is over. But instead, I mean, what happens? Joseph wakes up from his dream actually believing that God's plan was the way to go. He believed and had faith in God. Now that is quite a gift that God gave Joseph in this uh, really gnarly predicament. <laughs> okay, kids and adults, go back in your Bibles to verse 21 of the first chapter of Matthew. What did Jesus come to do? And what does this mean for you? Because he's given you a promise. This word is not only for Joseph. This word is for you. And what is he up to? Why, oh why, would the Son of God come to earth? Why? Because he will save his people from their sins. Period. End of sentence. <laughs> now, I don't know the answer to my multiple choice question here, kids or adults. What is the most astonishing thing in this passage? All of them, maybe. It's kind of shocking that God chose to come to earth in this scandalous way, totally apart from the law. I love it. There is maybe a hint, though, that God might do this since it was prophesied. And since our God seems to have these outlaw qualities over and over, choosing Jacob and not Esau, giving a man who couldn't speak the voice to... Uh, help free Israel from their bondage. That was Moses. I mean, there, it's just chock full of these outlaw promises winning the day rather than the law. Maybe we should have expected it. Uh, B, that Jesus would not save us from armies or hardship, but our very own sin and unbelief. We think that God came comes to give us advantage. Riches, maybe. That being a Christian might give us all of the good things, the good things. He came to give you more than that. He's saving you from your sin and unbelief. Now that, that's astonishing. See, that Joseph awoke from the dream and actually believed it. We kind of went over this. That he had, that's, that's a miracle. That he had faith in that gospel proclamation that he was given. Do not be afraid. Huh. That God gives faith in the saving mercy of Jesus Christ to you and others at your table. Oh, now I'm sad that you're not around a table to hear this, but maybe you're at home. Do you hear it now? God does this for you. Now that's astonishing. This is a longer, a more lengthy worded one. That Emmanuel, God with us. From Isaiah does not wait for our invitation or our best preparation or waits for us only in the sanctuary or in the fellowship hall or in our houses, that wherever you are, he comes right into your truth and your reality, whether you're feeling good or bad. He decides to be with you it wasn't Joseph's plan. It wasn't your plan. It was God's this whole time. Ah. All right. That was our worship. That was our little table worship. Now back to it, everybody.